Have you ever been in that situation where you have to create or maintain some graphics or pivot tables in Excel, but you can't integrate Excel to the source data? What is the problem here? You need to maintain these graphics or these pivots manually, right? What if I tell you that there is a way to continue doing such a manual maintenance, but getting it done in a matter of minutes with a minimal interaction with Excel? One understanding is key for this, and we will learn it right here, right now. Hello professionals, my name is Diogo Rodão and welcome back to another class to improve your capability to maintain information and reports in Excel. In today's class, you will learn that you don't need to invest a ton of your time when manipulating and maintaining data in your day-by-day -day activities. We will make use of a feature in Excel called Dynamic Range. If you never heard about it, it is normal, because Dynamic Range is not a button or a formula. It's the name of the way you select the range of data that will belong to your graphic or pivot table. Probably. You already did it in your work without knowing what it's made for. I have already explored it quickly in other of my videos, like this one up here, where I teach about the pivot tables. Let's see the screen and learn how it works and how it can be beneficial to you and your working performance. But before that, aren't you a subscriber yet? It's been one minute you are here with me. You are for sure interested, don't you? Subscribing to my channel would be a tremendous help in growing it and supporting me in keeping posted tips like this very one here. Let's get this class started. All right, guys, so this is one Excel that I prepared for you with one pivot table and one chart, which is coming from this pivot table and some of uh, slicers, you know, also connected to this pivot table. So these guys, these elements are working just like charm. They are normally working, see? See, whatever I filter here, see, it's moving. It's working. And these guys are connected to this ref data here, to this big table here that I got from the internet. All right, this table has almost uh, 10,000 rows and I manually connected this pivot table to that source. How did I do that? I simply create a new pivot table. Let's see this very quickly. Insert pivot table. Then here, see, select the table or range. I went to my ref data. I click here on A1, Ctrl Shift right until the very last column and then Ctrl Shift it down until the very last line. See here my range. I did OK and voila, I have my pivot table here. Now I just need to add my columns. Let's say here um, segment and then uh, let's add now here um, state above segment. See, and now let's add here uh, any counter. One counter, let's call it uh, customer ID is a counter. So see, this is the amount of sales I did per segment, per state. But this is not what I want to teach you in this video. This is just a very quickly, very simple pivot table, simple for you. So let's now see uh, how dynamic range work on this pivot table here. Before that, what is the problem? The problem is that the range that I chose here, if I click here into the pivot table, click analyze and click here on change source data, the range is static. See here? The range is going from A1 until U9995. So it's going from there, here the first one, until the very last one down here, all right? And what is the problem with this static range? If I add rows underneath the very last one, the range will not update itself automatically. And your pivot tables, your charts, your slicers, whatever we're depending on this ref data won't get automatically updated. So how to fix that? Using dynamic range. Let's see now how it works. Instead of doing this, you know, this fixed range, click on the column A and drag all the way to the end until the very last column with the data column U and see how, how the range changes. Now it's going from column A, whatever's in there, to column U, whatever's in there. If you hit OK, you see guys, nothing much changed. The data is pretty much the same, the graphic is still working, the slicers are still working, although it will make the chart very messy because there is a lot of data here where this chart is not suitable for it. So let's choose one state here, let's say uh, Arkansas. See? Let's get Alabama was a better one. See, the chart now is back working. And then you are asking me, but Joe, what is the change? The change is the following. Here on the, on the filters, you are now going to have one filter called blank. On every single slicer or every single filter, see, 
you have one option called blank. And what is blank? Blank are all rows that are under the very last item, the very last row that has data in your table. So all rows that has nothing are grouped into one type called blank. Because remember, this is a power table and the power table groups things. But this is the same understanding for everything else, for charts, for slices, for everything. So you just need to make sure that you are applying filters to your pivot table, to your charts, to your slicers. Otherwise, the blank entry will always be visible. In this sample here that I prepared to you, and that there will be a link to this file here on the description, I applied filters. So this blank entry will simply be ignored. But keep this in mind, that the blank entry will now be part of each one of your filters, even if your pivot table, if you don't apply filters to it. Right, so this is the only negative aspect, but uh, easily manageable. And what is the positive aspect? Let's see the screen. If I now come to the very last data, I was written by Alabama, right? So let's first get here the state Alabama. I have a 61 rows in there. Let's see one number here. Let's say, see here, uh, between zero and 1,000, there are 9,600 something uh, sales, all right? So let's get now all this data and uh, duplicate down here under the very last one. See, everything for Alabama is duplicated. If I come back here to my pivot table, nothing's changed because this is the nature of pivot tables. Pivot tables doesn't get deleted by itself. You must press on the refresh button. So keep that in mind. Pivot tables does not get refreshed by itself. It's a snapshot of the data by the moment you create or last or refresh it for the last time. All right, you must always come here to data and press the button here, refresh all then see what happens now it's 19,300 something the pivot table got automatically updated just because i added more lines to it let's see now the opposite scenario where it doesn't work if i undo what i did see i had no entry here and then i am now cleaning this filter i'm going back to my pivot table and come here to analyze and then i will click on change source data and instead of dynamic i will choose a fixed range and do okay see i'm back to my normal once we are back here see nothing absolutely nothing changed but now see this if i come back here to my ref data and I do the same exercise Let's choose here state, let's choose here Alabama. Let's now select from the very first available cell until the very one on the right and then the very one down. And now let's, let's paste here under the very last available entry. See, I duplicated Alabama, right? Same thing I did on the dynamic range. Once I press on refresh data, see, nothing happens. Nothing at all happens, why? because you have one fixed range and that the the entries that i added are underneath are outside the range and that is the manual manipulation that the vast majority of the professionals do in always coming here to the change source data and uh, uh, enhance the area of the pivot table chart or devices or even worse, they don't know about this and they are reporting wrong information. And now guys, the bonus. Have you seen that RF data sheet I have? That sheet, let's assume that you got one sheet very like that from the external source. Or let's put it in a, in a better way. Let's say that you are working with a database or information on an email or information that is in other Excel or information that is on a web page etc and they were always copying information from there manipulating putting here in this excel etc if you manage to always get an extraction from the source you have or if you manage to always have one static view with the same columns columns not rows same columns from where your data is coming from try to keep the same structure because if you keep the same structure you can paste the data without format in your ref data and using dynamic range you don't need to manipulate your pivots or your charts because they will get automatically updated let's see how it works so imagine that this ref data here came from a csv which is a report that you got from uh, any automated tool and this report come into your mail as a csv you just need to open the data in your csv and paste the data here you know in the in your ref data sheet 
And as I said, if you manage to keep the same column structure the way it is, you don't need to care about the rows because the rows will be automatically fetched by the dynamic range, by this. See, because if I choose here A to U, see this? I am ignoring the rows. I'm just fetching the columns. It means whatever exists in these columns, I will bring to me, all right? Aren't you a subscriber yet? If you haven't seen until here, it means that you like it, right? So what are you waiting for? The subscribe button is right down here on the right. And please don't forget my like. Liking is just as important as subscribing itself. Tell me in the comments, how much would this technique be beneficial to your work? I bet you are now overthinking the way you create your pivot tables and your charts in Excel, don't you? The best way of maintaining reports in Excel is integrating with external sources. And Excel has an extensive variety of data sources that most likely could automate your current tasks. Keep turning to my channel. Very soon, I will create a video about Excel data source overview to teach you how to connect your data and save a lot of time in your daily routines. Thank you so much for watching. See you on next week.